morning, everyone. It seems like it's such a good day to praise the Lord, don't you think? Did you wake up this morning and put your feet on solid ground and say, I came to thank the Lord? I came to thank the Lord. If you agree, let's stand up if you can. Welcome to Family Worship Christian Church. This is a church where we like to sing loud. We like to praise Him out of a grateful heart. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you for your spirit of truth that is here today, moving, working, and having your will in our lives. Let everyone who has breath praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Let's make them. That's good.
to tell you how great you are. But Lord, I know all across this auditorium there were hearts split wide open in praise to you. And Lord, I just thank you. I thank you that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. And I thank you, Lord God, that we will go from now throughout eternity praising your goodness singing glory hallelujah to you O Lord we sing glory hallelujah to you Lord God no matter what it is we're walking through no matter what challenges we come through we will sing glory, hallelujah, to you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah, to you, Lord God. Thank you.
opportunity to pray for you in the in the seats here we came to be filled to overflowing today so if you would just reach a hand across and just take the hand of the person next to you and uh, we're gonna pray we're gonna believe God for you right here and right now the anointing is here that breaks every yoke okay Lord we thank you just start praying Saints praying for the needs of your brothers and your sisters. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we're the head, not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We thank you, Lord God, that your mighty spirit is here today, moving mightily in the midst of us, Lord God, working signs and miracles and wonders on behalf of your children. And we thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that there is truth that is just microscopic going forth right now, that the breastplate of righteousness is being wrapped around right now in Jesus' name, that burdens are being lifted, that sickness is healed and must leave in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That anything that the enemy meant for destruction has been turned right now, turned, turned in an instant for his good for those who love and call upon his name. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for strengthening us by the power and that we are bold. We are bold servants. We are bold servants. And we will go where you ask us to go. We will do what you ask us to do. And we thank you for your miracle-working power. If you're here today, and you are believing God for a marriage that seems to be a little bit off kilter. I want to tell you today, with God, all things are possible. And if you'll grab the hand of each other and you'll start praying, and you'll start believing and confessing the promises that he has made over marriages, you will, you will, you will overcome in Jesus' name. But you got to take that word and apply that word and stand on that word. If you're here today and you've got any wayward children, I believe the Lord wants you to know he knows exactly where they are. And he's got people positioned all around them. And there are mighty people that are going forth. He has heard your prayer. He has sent forth. He has sent forth. And you just be expecting. Now you will aid your faith by speaking words of faith and love over them. So if that be you in the house today, or you got a brother or a sister that's out there and you're believing God, let's stand together and believe him because he said nothing. Not one hair on your head is unnumbered. Not one bird falls from the sky that he doesn't see. And I'll tell you what, he is invested in their lives. Thank you, Lord God, for delivering them out of it all, that destruction doesn't touch them, that anything that lays in the noonday is uncovered and brought to naught in Jesus' name. And we see them victorious. We see them running the race with victory in their mouth and love in their hearts. Hallelujah. And you just see your marriage. You see your marriage healed, delivered, and you see it glorious because that's what he gave us was glorious. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We see it. We see it with the eyes of faith and we take it. Hallelujah. You are Hallelujah. Oh, Lord.
have a lot to shout about in this church because there is one testimony coming after another. And we better be testifying now of his goodness. Hallelujah. So thank you. The Lord is good. We're testifying of his goodness. We know people have been set free and we know people are healed and marriages have been turned around. And we thank you, Lord, for it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know what's so beautiful about the Lord? If we're not done praising Him, we're not going to stop praising Him today. Pastor John, thank you, Lord. Thank you, singers and musicians, and welcome family. We've got a nice group in the house today. Do we have any first-time visitors here? Very first time. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Family Worship Christian Church. This is the place where the love of God is evident, the Spirit of God is directing, and we have a guarantee you will not leave here the same as you came in Jesus' name. Um, our ushers will give you a little brochure to fill out. Um, when you finish the service, when you make sure to meet us in the bookstore, we have a gift for you. And um, just a uh, remembrance of us, and if you want to keep coming back, come on back. We leave the light on for you, as Pastor John always says. This is family. Um, well, family, this is August, and um, Pastor D, you said I could do a little testimony, because it kind of, about the marriage thing. I was married to my sweet husband for 30 years till he went home to be with the Lord. And those 30 years was not always a bed of roses. As a matter of fact, the first five was a nightmare. It was like we were the, ro remember that movie? 
the, the War of the Roses, well, that was us, okay? And for some reason, we prayed. And he would go off in his room, and when we weren't speaking, we could speak to God. And if God is not in the center of your marriage right now, make sure that he's there today before you leave. Because when you can't talk to each other, you can always talk to him. And sometimes it's better that you don't speak to each other, that you zip it, ladies, that you zip it and let the Lord deal with your husband. Okay, because I had to learn that the hard way. But the blessing of it was, is that God helped us both to grow together. As we grew, he gave us an assignment to work on the wedding ministry. That was a joke <laughs> to us, because we had had so many challenges in our marriage that we probably could write a few chapters in the pastor's books. All right, but anyway, all I'm saying is make God the center of your marriage so that one of you goes home, you still feel that spirit around you. You still feel that connection, okay? I had a prayer during my morning time, and my husband's been gone, it'll be two years this week. I had a prayer. God, can I just see him? Can you just let me see him? I want to see what he looks like. And about a week later, I wasn't even thinking about him. That night, he came to me in a dream. Beautiful as he always was. Younger looking than he was before he left here. But I looked at him, I said, you're alive. And didn't they say that to Jesus? You're alive, but we saw you dead. All right, so when you ask God and you're obedient to God and you keep God in your marriage, all the way through to the very end, he will give you the peace that passes all understanding. All right? And he'll just keep that spirit of love between you till you meet again in heaven. Amen? Amen. That's my little testimony. You know, there's more to it, but um, I'll just keep it going because I have this program that I have to read. If you did not pick up your brochure today, okay, if you did not pick up your brochure today, make sure that um, you do pick it up because our classes have resumed. The nine o'clock morning class on First Thessalonians, they're in the fourth verse, um, has started at 9 a.m. Um, the WOW Bible study will begin this Wednesday at 10 a.m., okay? Um, we have our healing prayer and um, healing school as well as our prayer will begin again on Monday. And of course, uh, on Wednesdays, we will have our women's meetings. And then of course, we will have our men's fellowship and breakfast this coming Saturday, the 12th. And breakfast will be served, gentlemen, but so will the word go forth. So those are the things in your brochure. Make sure that you pick up a copy before you leave so that you know the times and dates and all the other future things that are going on. Amen. Well, for those of us that are keeping God first, and there's such a thing as prioritize, and you have to prioritize. Um, the Lord gave that word to me when we had um, a night with the king. We were here on a evening, a Friday evening, and um, he just said prioritize, and many of us put too many things as the priority. The job, the money, the rent. Put him first. Everything else will fall in place. You know, no matter what you have, just put him first. So um, he's given you a church, that is a wonderful church to be a member of, a wonderful church to be a part of, a wonderful ministry. And this ministry goes out into this community and blesses others. And as we open up our church home to welcome others in, we need the finances to keep it flowing. We need to keep the lights on, the air conditioning going, food on the table in the kitchen, as well as plates for you to, um, to eat off of, amen? So, um, as Jesus said to us in John 14, 15, do what I've told you to do. If you love me, and just watch him work on your behalf. Money will come to you, things will come to you, apartments, houses will come to you without you even have to. He knows what you have need of. He knows what's ahead of you. Put him first. Make him your priority. In Philippians 4, 17, 19, it says, not that I desire a gift, but I desire that fruit may abound in your account, that I have all and abound 
I am full, having received of Ephrodites the things which were sent from you, an odor, a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable and well-pleasing to God. Whatever we give, he's pleased with. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So as you give, he's going to give to you. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Think on that. That's a very true word from the Apostle Paul to us, that we should think on him first. And as the Apostle Paul tried to start his ministry, and the ministry was having challenges with finances, his friend Apollos gave into the ministry. As, a, as Apostle Paul was the seed and planted the seed, Apollos watered the seed. So we're gonna be watering our seed with our tithes and offerings so that this ministry can grow and continue to be a blessing to this community. When you came in today, there were envelopes at both entrances. If you have cash, we ask that you put the cash in the envelope. If you have checks and you um, have your name and address on it, you don't need to put an envelope in there. It's already got all of your information. But also, we have a debit card machine in the bookstore. So if you're used to paying your tithes or offerings with your bank card, we have accommodating you by having a bank card machine in the bookstore. And for those of you computer savvy folks, you haven't been left out. You can pay your tithes and offerings on lasvegaschurch.org. So this is a modern church. We're going to keep the finances flowing, keep the church growing, and keep being a blessing to Las Vegas. Amen? So why don't we all lift up our tithes and offering vehicles, whether it be bank cards or envelopes or checks or cash. God takes whatever you have, and he blesses it. And let's thank him. Thank you, Father, for being such a blessing to us today, for giving us another opportunity to be a blessing to your ministry. We're your hands and feet, and we do as you ask us to do. And as we continue to do for you, we're expecting an abundant return on our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, pastor's been preaching on the last days, and uh, I guess mostly from Revelation. You know, you're going to be speaking on that today, talking on that. Uh, and as he's been saying something, we'd like to anesthetize you before that. So this is a song I wrote quite a few years ago. This is the good part of Revelation, the fun part. So. There is going to be a party up in heaven. Everyone's invited to go. We are all going to party with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We're going to shout hallelujah, give him the praise. We're going to dance before our Lord. We're going to party up in heaven like you've never seen a party before. There will be no booze We're gonna drink from the river of life There will be no dope nor drugs We're gonna be on a spiritual high This party there will be no curfew It's gonna last forevermore We're gonna party up in heaven Like we've never seen a party before
one with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We're going to shout hallelujah, give them the praise. We're going to dance before our Lord. We're going to party up in heaven like you've never seen a party before. Yes, we are. We're going to party up in heaven like you've never seen a party. EDC won't have a thing on us. party. Amen. Praise the Lord. I like that line. EDC won't have a thing on us, will they? No hangovers in heaven. Praise the Lord. Oh, he's good today, isn't he? I tell you, I got so excited today when we're doing that um, glory, glory, hallelujah. I, I was just waiting for the curtains to part and Elvis to come out. I said, Excuse me, son. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, I tell you, it's just good spirit in here today. How many are glad you came so far? Amen. Hey, it beats being at the doctor, doesn't it? You know, I knew a fellow one time, he went to the doctor. The doctor says, you got six months to live. He said, well, I can't pay. He said, okay, you got six more. <laughs> Amen. I'll give me a D or something close to that. You know, God is so great, isn't he? Who he is is so great. You know, laughter is good medicine. They say, you know, the only day that's a day wasted is a day that you don't laugh. Pity the fool that doesn't laugh. Amen. So we try to do a lot of laughter around here. I believe Christians should really be the happiest people in the world, don't you? We have the best future of anyone else in the world. I mean, you can take the, the greatest billionaire in the world today. I don't know who it is, maybe Bill Gates. There's probably people got more money than him. Maurice does. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyone that even has more money than Bill Gates that doesn't know Jesus Christ, they have nothing to be happy about because the future is not good. But when we have Jesus in our life, man, it's just like he said in the song, we're going to, heaven is going to be a great time as we get prepared to rule and reign with him for a thousand years on this earth. Amen. Amen. And what a better place. Oh, I tell you what, what a better place for us just to get together and spend some time with him than right here in his church. Can you say Amen. Some folks say, well, you know, I just can't wait till I get to, to heaven because, you know, it's just going to be me and Jesus. Well, you can correct me on this. I don't know. If, I've not seen this in the Word either way, but I'm not even sure in heaven that Jesus is going to be omnipresent. The only one omnipresent is the Holy Spirit. You know that. So that means you might have to share him with everybody else. Where do you think he's going to be? He can be right in his church teaching sessions. We're going to be worshiping him, ad adoring him. So I always like to say this, you know, if you don't like going to church on earth, why would you want to go to heaven? Because it seems like heaven is going to be one long church service and the main speaker is going to be Jesus Christ himself and we are going to give adoration to him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that enthusiasm out there. I appreciate that. Amen. I'll tell you. Jesus said, you know, that he would build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against him. Amen. Well, you know, some folks would say, well, you know, I just don't believe in organized religion. Well, Jesus believes in his church. Amen. I don't know about organized religion, but he surely believes in his church. Amen. Some would say, well, a church is not a building. You're right. Amen. But it is a group of people that gather together in one. I don't know about you, but I've always found this to be true. I don't know why I'm off on this, because you're all here today. But it's for whoever's home watching it on TV right now. 
because you know there's a difference between attending a service and watching a service. As a matter of fact, I found this to be, faith doesn't come by watching or listening, faith comes by hearing. And you can listen and still not hear. Isn't that true? How many guys could say that, you know, when your wife is talking at you, you don't always hear it, don't, I see you. I see my friend Jay looking down right now. You don't tell me you've done that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, we watched a, a marriage thing just recently. It was kind of funny. Now, the lady said this. Uh, her name was Phyllis Moore. You know, you, how many heard of Keith Moore? She said this. She said, have you noticed there's no marriage in heaven? God must have finally figured out it wasn't such a good idea. You know? <laughs> but yeah, he has a sense of humor, doesn't he? He puts two people together, you know, that are completely the opposite. Isn't that right? <laughs> and you know, he says, okay, here you go, live together. <laughs> and it, it, isn't it amazing when you live with somebody completely your opposite, it tends to reveal the areas of your flesh that are unredeemed, doesn't it? <laughs> Amen. We won't go too deep into that. We all got to go home. How many can say that's true, gentlemen? Amen. Jay's saying, please stop, Pastor John. Stop right now. Oh, let's just thank him for a moment. Praise him for a moment, shall we? Is that all right? There's just such a spirit in here today of praise and worship and adoration to him. We sing that song, you know, how great is our God. And it's like... There's just nothing else like him, is there? There's no one else like him. In all in heaven, you know, the, the years that were there. It's going to be just awesome. We worship you in spirit and Just worship him. We worship you in spirit and in truth. For all good things come from you. If you feel burdened this morning, the Bible tells us, you know, in First Peter, I believe it is, 5-7, it says that we're to cast all our cares on to Him because He cares for us much. So if you can see yourself today doing this, I think it will help you. But you remember when you, well, I don't know, they don't do it anymore, but when I grew up, you remember when they used to have tin foil balls? You never threw tin foil away, did you, when you were... Because after all, they might not make any more of it. So if you can see yourself this morning taping all your cares...
to one of those little tin foil balls, crinkling it up, and then just tossing it to Jesus. Because the Bible says we're to cast all our cares on to Him, because He cares much for us. I'm telling you, Christians shouldn't have a care in the world, because they all belong to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We've been talking a little bit about the subject of the end times. We realize, of course, that we're not approaching them. We're already in them. And I believe it's Second Timothy chapter 3. We could look at that today. Verse 4. Well, let's just start with verse 1 for those that haven't been with us the whole service. He says, know this, that in the last days, perilous times are going to come, right? So we've talked about the meaning of these words. We'll not go back on that, but you can actually rewatch the services if you like, if you want to know the meaning of some of these Greek words. But it said, men is going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. We're, of course, seeing all these things. Go ahead if you would. He says, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Let's look at the next verse if we could. Then he says, traitors. And last week we left off on the word heady. Does anyone remember what that word means? means, you know, all sorts of violence taking place. We live in a very violent society, in a very violent world, don't we? You know, you can see violence taking place. It's, it's very evident in this city. You know, there's all sorts of road rage that takes place here. So, we have to believe God for safety, isn't that true? And so, there's lots of violence happening, but I want you to notice the word today, and we're going to look at that for a moment. It's the word high-minded. The word high-minded. Now the word high-minded is actually a translation of the Greek word and it's the word typhu. Typhu. Okay? And it's actually where we get the word typhoon. Has anyone ever been out in a typhoon before? Let me see your hands. Anybody? Hey, we've seen a few folks, you know. Those that were in the Navy, maybe, were out there in a typhoon. I guess if you're going to be in a typhoon, it's better be in a ship than a boat, isn't that right? Or a canoe. How would you like to maneuver some of those waves? But it, when a typhoon comes, it covers the entire landscape and arrives with very destructive winds. You know, sort of like a hurricane. And as it approaches, the sky looks ominous and foreboding. It turns very dark and very turbulent, but when the storm arrives on shore, everything in close proximity is affected, except for those who fled from the storm or took adequate shelter. Oh, thank God he's our shelter. Jesus is our shelter. Now someone said, well, yeah, but Pastor John, didn't it say that it rains on the just and the unjust? Well, it does, but you don't have to be out in it. Or if you're going to go out in the rain, have enough sense to take your umbrella. As dangerous and destructive as typhoons are, you want to know what the good news is? They never last long. They are short-lived and eventually pass. Likewise, the events that the Holy Spirit is describing may seem overwhelming to us as we read about them, but right in the middle of the text, he reminds us that none of this is going to last long. Just as the typhoon passes quickly, these events will also pass. How many know Psalm chapter 91 verse 6 says this? Psalm 91 6 says, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at midday. Ah, there's all kinds of destruction going on. But thank God that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
Now that verse should say a lot to us that live out in the desert because we're always looking for a shadow. I always find it very humorous, you know, in a parking lot when you see everybody fighting over the spot where there's a tree about this tall just to get about that much shadow onto your steering wheel or your hood thinking it's really going to help you. But man, we just have this on the inside of us. We have this inclination or whatever it is to seek shelter when the storm is coming. Well, there is a storm that's coming and there's a storm that's here. Let us seek shelter in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, an interpretive translation of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4 could actually read this. Are you ready? People will be preoccupied with and known for their violence, but all of this will pass. Just as a storm appears on the horizon and brings destruction with it, these violent winds in society will not last long. As threatening as it may look, it will pass just as surely as storms always pass. There's actually a song out there. I believe the title of it is this. Every storm runs out of rain. Isn't that true? And the storm that this world is facing right now will eventually run out of rain. But let me tell you what, Jesus will still be standing. And those of us that are with him will be standing in him. Can you say amen today? Now, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 8. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 8 says this. It says, For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteousness, righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Now, the word here, actually, is a word that says it actually, the word tormented here is actually the word vexed from the King James, if we could put it up there real quick. I didn't notice we were on the King, but that's fine. It said it vexed his righteous soul day from day. That's actually in the King James Version. Now, the, the word vex is an interesting word. It's the Greek word bazinado, and it means this. It means to be tortured. It means to be tortured. Have you ever been around sin or been around something that was very sinful and just on the inside of you it just felt like your soul was tortured you know we have folks many times I'll be honest with you we've lived here now for almost well about 15 years since 2002 and um, we uh, we have folks always ask us you know about the strip or they always want to see the strip. How many can identify with that? They want to see the strip when they come to town. And I'll be honest with you, um, we don't ever go unless somebody wants to see it because we just don't like the way you feel when you go down there. I mean, first of all, with the billboards that are up there, you almost got to drive with your eyes half shut. You might get into an accident because it vexes your soul. It actually tortures your righteous soul because when you got the life of God living on the inside of you, it just feels like yuck to be around sin, doesn't it? See, when Lot first moved to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, the evil sights that he saw in those cities tortured his soul. But because he dwelt among them and saw their sinful deeds from day to day, after a period of time, his soul was no longer tortured. Do you remember? You know, we still have this. I'll be honest with you. I'll, I'll tell on us so you can't get mad that I know something about you. <laughs> but, you know, we always have our minister's convention here every year. We're fixing to commence to have one in October. The ministers will all be here from California and Arizona, and I don't know where they all come from. But anyway, they come here, and it's kind of like they come to Las Vegas, and they're just freaked out. Because, you know, it's like sin is supersized here, isn't it? You know, 
I mean, sin goes on. Don't kid yourself. Sin goes on all over the world in every major city, but it's just much more blatant than out in the open here. You know, and people come here and they go like, oh my God, how do you live here? You know, and I say, well, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't even really even notice it anymore because I've been in it so long. See, and we have to be careful that because we live in it, for so long that we don't become accepting of it, number one, because it's not all right. It's not all right with God, so it shouldn't be all right with us either. But what can happen to us is this. Our souls or our spirits can literally become desensitized from the things of God. Just by living in a place like this. That's the danger of it. Now, of course, we know where sin abounds. What happens? Grace much more abounds. Isn't that right? That's good. I mean, there's a lot of grace here. How many know we need grace to live in Las Vegas? Otherwise, we'll get into all kinds of trouble. How many of you got in trouble? Don't raise your hand. Amen. But it can happen to anybody unless they think they're too spiritual. But what happened a lot was he completely lost his spiritual sensitivity because of the images became so commonplace to him. And the story of Lot is actually a lesson to us. Now, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says this. Let's look at it and thanks for putting it up in the King James Brad. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. The New Living Translation says this, the NLT version says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Now one of the dangers, one of the things of living in Las Vegas is a desensitized heart. So we that live here, you know, someone that lives in the Bible Belt, let me tell you what, I lived in the Bible Belt. There's plenty of sin and wrongdoing that goes on in the Bible Belt as well. But let me tell you what, what happens here is much more out in the open. It's much more blatant. So we must work more diligently to guard our hearts if we're going to live here. Because if we don't, See, here's the deal. Your mind is always being renewed to something. Now, if you watch the news all the time, it's being renewed to that. I like to, I like to lovingly say if you watch CNN, the constant negative news, you will become constantly negative. You know, if you watch the entertainment channel all the time, you'll know everything about entertainment and everything else, and your mind will become renewed to that. But, at, but whatever becomes greater, the Word becomes less. So we must renew our mind to the Word. Can you say amen? And I believe this. You know, in Hebrews chapter 10, I believe it's about verse 28. It tells us, you know, it says... Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, especially as you see that day approaching. Now, why is it so important that we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together? I think that's it, or it's 1023, it's one of them. But anyway, why is that so important? Well, for number one, we need to have our minds renewed. Isn't that right? Now, there's some renewing of the mind. The only renewing you're going to get the only renewing, or I should say this, the only stream of renewing that you're going to get is going to be in your local church. Now, you can get renewed. Can you get re your mind renewed by watching television programs and preachers? Of course you can. There's lots of good ones out there. There's also not so good ones out there as well. But the one thing that a church offers, I believe, is this a commercial for the church? Well, maybe, I don't know. The Holy Spirit is just leading me in this direction. I didn't premeditate on it. But one of the things that a local church offers that you can get watching television, are you ready for this? It's the word that we all dislike so much. Do you know what it is? Let me hear some guesses. Anybody out there? Rama. No. We all like Rama, don't we? No. 
I'll, you're not going to get it, so I'm going to give it to you. It's the word accountability. Accountability. Nobody wants to be accountable to anybody anymore, do they? It's just me and Jesus. Will you show me a, ju a just a me and Jesus person, and I'll show you a nut. I'll show you somebody that's accountable to nobody, and they're actually a danger to the church. That's for the people that are watching. You're all here. Give yourself a pat on the back. You did pretty good today. No, we all need accountability. People say, oh, you know, all those people in leadership, all those pastors, you know, they all need accountability because all they're going to do is rob everybody of money. Well, first of all, most pastors that had any sense, if they wanted to make money, they wouldn't be pastoring. There's a lot easier ways of making money. Let me tell you, can my wife say amen to that? She, she's just looking at me, but she knows it's true. <laughs> amen. But it's not just leadership that needs accountability. It's followership as well. You see, when you're not here and you're not here for long enough, guess what? That should, an alarm should go off, not just with me, but with everybody else here, that you're not here. And people should call you and say, where are you? Because guess what's happening? You're probably going backwards. I said, that would never happen to me. I'm so Joe spiritual. Well, if you think you're that Joe spiritual, you're probably more of a target for the devil than anybody else. It can happen to anybody. Whether they're a pastor, whether they're a prophet, whether they're an evangelist, a teacher, it can happen to anybody. So one of the reasons why we all need each other, and that's why, you know, you don't get a lot of accountability in a big church. Because in a big church, you, know, you can just kind of squeak in, sit down. Nobody knows if you're there. Nobody really cares. You get up, you leave, you go back to living like the world again and fornicating and committing adultery. And nobody knows. But you come into a church like this, and you hear a message like that, and it's going to kind of make you feel uncomfortable. And you know, I found this. Sin should make us feel uncomfortable. If you're going to a church that sin doesn't make you feel comfortable, you're going to the wrong church. Now I've also, you know, we, we don't try to rip on anybody because, you know, every one of us need Jesus. We've all sinned. I say, well, I didn't sin this week. Oh, yeah? You want me to get into it with you? Want me to show you what a liar you really are? I just did. You lied. Because you all sinned, right? You all had an impure thought this week, didn't you? Everybody but me. And if I really meant that, I'd have to repent to you for lying right now. Isn't that true? Come on, y'all said something you shouldn't have said. Isn't that right? Y'all thought something you shouldn't have thought. Y'all said something you shouldn't have said. Y'all did something you shouldn't have did. Come on. You might as well say, man, it's so. So we need accountability amongst us all. In a church like this, you can have accountability here. Now, I've, I've, I've had this happen to me before. Have you ever had this happen to you before? You know, you've known someone that is stumbling in an area, so you lovingly bring that to their attention, and they respond to you by saying this, only God can judge me. I'd like, you know, have you ever seen that tattoo? Only God can judge me. I've seen that on a few people. I'd like to say, you should reward that. Only God will judge you, because he is going to judge you. And the thing is, here's the good news. There's always good news. The gospel is good news. If we will judge ourselves while we are here, when we get there, we will not be judged. Well, I thought God was going to judge me for everything bad I did. Well, he's not going to judge you for everything bad you did if you will judge yourself here. Then it's like, you know, if you ask forgiveness, what happens? He assigns it to the sea of forgetfulness. He says, I will not remember no more. So if he said he will not, that means he cannot. Because he said he won't, he can. Amen. So, you know, we like to lovingly say, when God assigns your sins to the sea of forgetfulness, don't go scuba diving for him. Now that's good news, isn't it? You might say, why are you saying all that, Pastor John? 
because someone needs to hear that this morning. We all need accountability. We all need each other. A body needs each other. Can you say that with me today? A body needs each other. You might say, well, you know what? I don't need that person in the body. I don't even like them. Well, what are you going to do when we get to heaven? You're, you're, you're going to, you know, you may be roomies with them. I think the Lord has a sense of humor, don't you? If you don't get it right on earth, well, God's going to give me a mansion. Now he'll probably give you a dormitory. And it'll be filled with people you don't like. Get your ugly flesh in line with the word. Amen. Amen. Am I being too hard on you this morning? Go get him. Maurice says, go get him. He's so jovial over the party song. But it is going to be a party in heaven, isn't it? So where were we on all that? We said that we are going to guard our hearts. Especially living in this city. That's a word to somebody today. I realize some of us here work in areas that are not too godly. Some of you may work in casinos where there's all types of debauchery and things that take place. All types of things that are ungodly. You better pray that God will guard your heart. And you better guard it yourself. Amen. Because he has not called you to be darkness, but he's called you to be light in the midst of the darkness. But if you are light in the midst of the darkness, just know this, your battery will eventually run out of current. See, we all have this rechargeable battery on the inside of us and we need to be recharged with him welcome to the filling station your battery is being recharged this morning we're giving you some things that will help you we hope that it has today I'm going to ask every head bowed every eye closed right now he might say Pastor John I have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I don't know him. Or maybe you do know him and you've walked away. Or maybe, you know, you've just flat got into some darkness. You've given, you know, you've given your heart over to some areas you know isn't right. Maybe that's you. Well, let me tell you what. I could be so bold to say it's been all of us at one time or another in our walk. But the good news is, you can take a thousand steps away, but it's only one step back. It says, if we'll call on him, he's right there to help us. If that's you today, you say, Pastor John, I need prayer today. I want to get my life right. I want to get started back off on the right foot again. Anyone here today, could I see your hand? I want to pray with you. Not, we'll rejoice with you. We will. Looks like everybody here is in right standing with him. That's cool. Now, as we begin the service today, I said, paste everything you can on a little ball, roll it away. But I found this, you know, that when we give something or roll something to him, we must take something in to replace it. The Bible tells us, you know, that we're to be filled with the Spirit or be filled being filled. If you can envision this morning, this very room is filled with angels. The Holy Spirit is thick in here this morning. And if you can see yourself literally taking a breath, and that breath being the breath of God Himself, the breath of the Holy Spirit, take that in this morning. Allow it to replace those carries. cares. Allow it to replace those worries
today, Lord. We worship you. We worship you today. We worship you today. We worship you today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. today? Is He everything to you? He is like everything. He's my everything. He's my all in all. My, you name it, He's it. Let's stand up today as we leave this service. Grab hands the next somebody with you today. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity today. I bind this word to everyone's hearts today. Help us, Lord. We know you're the helper. So we ask for your help. We guard our hearts this week. We guard our minds. We ask you to continue to help us to do what's right. Be a pleasing child to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. You're dismissed. Have a great weekend, him. Yeah.